Sunday, and that means another edition of The Sports Guys. I'm your host, Jed Beecham, and with me is sports guru Larry Ramirez. Larry, how you doing today? Yeah, sports guru. Thanks for having me on. Yes, I appreciate sir. it. And so football season, you excited? I am excited. Finally underway. And so right. on that track, <laughs> uh, now the Dallas Cowboys have begun training camp in Oxnard this week, but it wasn't a smooth start. Wide receiver and returner Lucky Whitehead was cut on Monday after a warrant was issued for his arrest because he failed to show up for a court date for a shoplifting charge in June. The only problem is he was innocent. Virginia police misidentified him and cleared Whitehead of all charges on Tuesday, but the Cowboys stuck to their decision to cut Whitehead. Now, despite his innocence, Larry, was this the right move? Well, I don't know if it was the right move, but apparently it was the move they wanted to make. I think there were some other problems going on with the Cowboys and Lucky Whitehead, so they saw this as their opportunity to get rid of him. But the thing is, had the Cowboys gone back to ask him, hey, come back and join us, I think Lucky would have been like, nah, uh -uh, you guys have already done your damage to me. And, and probably so. Like, honestly, because Lucky, he did nothing wrong. And yep. so this is on the Cowboys, and the Cowboys, they've had problems in the past with allowing players with – shaky pass mm -hmm. to, to join the team and to stay on the team. Well, lucky this time, they try and make an example. Finally, they do something, and it kind of backfires. <laughs> yeah, I mean, indeed. really, this is what happens. And so for you, what do you think lucky, like you mentioned, would, do you think lucky would even want to come back? I mean... I wouldn't. If I wouldn't. I know that for myself. And Lucky, just guessing, no. Why would you? I mean, he was totally embarrassed. He said he knew nothing about the incident. He told the Cowboys he was innocent, and yet they still cut him. And, and I, at least for Lucky, he was picked up by the Jets. Yeah. So hopefully uh, this, this can all pack, get past him and he can join another team and exactly. hopefully make the roster. So back to football, no doubt the biggest question headed into the season for the Texans is the QB position. Houston drafted Deshaun Watson in the first round this year, but also have quarterbacks Tom Savage and Brandon Whedon, who both have NFL experience. So would, who do you think should start, Larry? And who do you think will start? Well... It's really a tough call, man. I'll tell you what, I believe Tom Savage should be the starter. Okay. And early on, I felt Tom Savage would be the week one starter. Gotcha. But watching Deshaun Watson more and more at practice, watching him in their first preseason game, mm -hmm. listening to head coach Bill O'Brien talk about him, it seems more and more likely he could be the week yeah. one starter. And if not, he will be the starter, I'm sure, at some point during the regular season. And of course, coming out uh, of the draft, he was a first round draft pick. And then the Texans, I mean, he had, in college, he had won a national championship. Mm -hmm. He was a two-time Heisman finalist. So the hype was around this guy. And so they, a lot of Texans fans want him just because yeah. of the hype itself. But Bill O'Brien, I mean, he's, he's a QB guru. guru. He's mm -hmm. a guy that knows his quarterbacks. And so if he thinks Savage should start, and even DeAndre Hopkins, the Texans' number one wide receiver, has said, I back Savage. Yeah. And so do you think that having those two guys, you know, obviously putting their full blind faith in Savage, do you think that... That, that should be who the week one starter is? Well, it'll definitely help his cause, but if Watson outperforms Savage during preseason mm. games and training camp, then I don't see how you can't agree. give agree. it to Deshaun Watson. I mean, and Bill O'Brien doesn't gush over very many rookies, if any at all. He really gushes over Deshaun Watson. I mean, True. he is a bright young man. He's a very good football player. So I feel Tom Savage should start. I still think he will be the week one starter, but I wouldn't be surprised if Watson's under center come game one. And I wouldn't either. And, of course, the biggest thing is how do you perform on the field, as you were mentioning yeah. in the preseason game. Watson, his very first game, amazing. Yep. And, of course, Savage, he's only started two games last season for the Texans and had zero TDs. Yep. And this game, he was okay. He was efficient, but nothing out of the ordinary. I think he will get the start, but I do see – watch out for Deshaun Watson this season. <laughs> exactly. I think he will start at least one game. And so switching over to basketball, free agent big man Pau Gasol officially re-signed with the silver and black this week. But many are saying Spurs overpaid him. The 37-year-old got a three-year deal with $48 million with a partial guarantee on the third year. Now, in your opinion, Larry, is Gasol worth $16 million a year? And would you have allocated the money elsewhere? Love Pal, love what he does on the court, love that he's a big that can stretch the, the court for mm -hmm. you by shooting the three. And as a person, he's a great guy, always so nice to the media and the fans. But I do feel at this stage of his career, he's overpaid. I really wish that he would have taken more of a uh, home team discount yeah. and allotted some money, say, perhaps for a, a Chris Paul or maybe a Kyrie Irving or, or another key guy out there. Okay. And, and I agree with you, he's 37 years old. Yeah. And he's getting $16 million a year. 
he had, I mean, obviously career lows, he's in the Spurs mm -hmm. system, and his best performances were coming off the bench. Yeah. And so you're telling me that you're paying a guy that's coming off the bench $16 million a year when you had a big man in Dwayne Dedman that yep. just left this offseason for two, a two-year $14 million a year, so $7 million a year. You're paying, I mean, you're getting rid of Dwayne Dedman for, and keeping Powell. And then you also bring in Jonathan Simmons, who they also lost. So it's, for me, the people they lost, those two combined, are cheaper than Pau Gasol, <laughs> yeah. and I think they make more of an impact. Yeah. And so, for me, I thought for sure it should have been allocated elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt. I agree. And so, switching, staying in basketball, now the Kyrie Irving sweepstakes, as Larry mentioned, Kyrie Irving, <laughs> are still in full swing yeah. after he requested a trade from the Cavs organization earlier this week. But it just so happens that one of his preferred destinations is San Antonio. So who or what would the Spurs have to trade to get him? And do you think that he would even fit in this Spurs system? Well, that's my biggest question. Does he fit in the Spurs system? And here's why I say that. Reportedly, he's tired of playing second fiddle to LeBron James. Yeah. Well, if you come here to San Antonio and play on the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard's the number one guy. He's the big dog. True. So Kyrie, you'd have to play second fiddle again. Yeah. Now, there's a huge difference, of course, because Kawhi's a much more quiet, laid-back superstar. Yeah. He doesn't like the cameras and all that kind of stuff, whereas LeBron, we know oh, he's yeah. like on Broadway he all the time. he practically controls the team. Exactly. He's almost the team GM. So that's my first thing. Now, what they'd have to give up, they'd have to give up a lot because he's an elite player in the game, and the Cavs would want a lot. Probably mm -hmm. Danny Green, DeJounte Murray, you know, maybe even at two least. or three more yeah, guys. So I don't know if sacrificing all that depth is worth one guy, though. And, and, you, and you mentioned on Kyrie, he's an offensive player. I mean, yeah. he's an offensive guard, mm -hmm. high score. And when he complains, what's, what worries me is when he complains about being second fiddle to LeBron James, if you go back and look at stats, his usage percentage is higher than LeBron James. So the Cavs, the ball's in his hand more often than LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. And you go back to his performances. I mean, he took the game-winning shot and made it against the Golden State Warriors in the 2016 finals. I mean, is that not, like, they're, they're putting... <laughs> Their trust in his hands to make that shot. Yeah. He makes it. They win the NBA Finals on that amazing comeback. And so for me, I mean, I guess because LeBron is the celebrity is, you know, arguably the best basketball player of all time, maybe that's why Kyrie wants to, to move on because he's, he's tired of, he's not in the limelight. But again, you come to the Spurs, at least Kyrie, you know, you mentioned the Kawhi's quiet. Mm -hmm. At least Kyrie would be able to take, I guess, the media coverage and everything gets on Kyrie. But at the end of the day, this is Kawhi's team. Yeah. And the Spurs are built on defense. That's Kawhi's forte. Unfortunately, not Kyrie's. I don't think he'd fit the Spurs system. Well, then maybe that's what he wants. Maybe he wants to go another team where he doesn't mind being the number two guy, but he'd be the number one media guy because, mm -hmm. you know, as you just said, yeah. Kawhi, he doesn't like that. Tim Duncan doesn't. doesn't like it. I mean, the big stars of San Antonio Spurs over the years, they don't really care for that. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what he needs. Maybe he's cool with being second fiddle, but he wants to be number one in the media. Maybe, maybe so. And so do you think, you know, final prediction, does Kyrie come to the Spurs? I don't see it happening. I, I don't really see don't. it happening. I don't think he fits. Yeah.